Good evening from Sevilla, specifically the Estadio Ramon Sanchez Pizjuan. It's always a bit of a mouthful to remember that. Manchester United haven't been back here since 2018, which was a pretty forgettable goalless draw. It was the return leg that caused all the headlines when Sevilla won 2 1 at Old Trafford, eliminated United from the Champions League, and a few days later, Jose Mourinho delivered his immortal football heritage sermon at Carrington. Uh, it's a very different Manchester United this time. United that season, then did it trophyless. It was a pretty respectable season, but it was still a trophyless one. And the defeat to Sevilla pretty much signalled the beginning of the end for Jose Mourinho as well. For Eric Ten Hag, still new beginnings, even though United have won a trophy. There's still an awful lot to play for this season. And it really would be a major disappointment if they were to go out to Sevilla, despite their immense Europa League pedigree. This severe side is not a good side, frankly. Uh, the better team that United are going to be playing this weekend is at Wembley and Brighton. There's a, I mean, a lot of people might argue that Brighton are actually better than some of the teams getting to the Champions League semi-finals. The quality and the competitiveness of the Premier League is that high and the quality in other leagues is, is pretty low. And La Liga specifically, the quality in that league has diminished in recent years. And the fact that Sevilla, the third team, is not the Sevilla side of uh, yesteryear when they had that golden period of recruitment. It's a very underwhelming to be a side. It's a side that could have Alex Tellers lining up against Manchester United tomorrow night. As for United's own lineup, it's very reassuring for United supporters that Marcus Rashford, Luke Shaw, Marcel Sabitzer and Tyrone Malassia have all travelled out here. When I asked Ten Hag last week about his selection for games this week, he said that he would have to bear in mind the upcoming games as well. Given that Manchester United have got an FA Cup semi-final on Sunday, his selections tomorrow night will have to have a bearing on that game at Wembley. For instance, the right-back situation, do you play Aaron Wan-Bissaka tonight or do you play him against Matoma on Sunday? Given what happened in the League Cup final on that Wembley pitch and how uh, what, what a difficult time Diogo Dallo had against Alanson Maxman, there's arguably uh, a cause for, for Dallo to start against Sevilla and then to come out the side of Wan-Bissaka to come in against Matoma, who's been one of the players of the season in the Premier League and is extremely exciting attacking talent to watch as well. Beyond that, there's going to be a lot of uh, debate between now and kick-off, or certainly between now and when the team drops, uh, over whether Marcus Rashford should start. Rashford, of course, has not played since he came off injured against Everton less than two weeks ago. Again, given that United have got an FA Cup semi-final on Sunday, it's probably, if you're to start him in a game this week, it's probably best to start him against Brighton and trust the players to get the job done against Sevilla, at least from the start. And also you'd have the bonus of being able to bring Rashford on as a game changer, something that worked out very well against Wolves on New Year's Eve when he had that punishment of not being uh, selected from the start by Ten Hag due to his tardiness. He came on, he scored the winning goal. He's obviously one of United's most important players, but there is also uh, the easing in process to, to consider, particularly when there could be far bigger games ahead for United. And even as far as the Premier League is concerned, they've got Tottenham next Thursday, which is another, not, not a game that is feeling as significant as it perhaps should be due to Spurs' Spurs's own form and the fact that Spurs play away at Newcastle on Sunday, but still nonetheless a very important game for United uh, as, as the game continues to come thick and fast. As, as we've said before, they've pretty much got a game every three or four days between now and their final game of the season, whenever that may be, whether it's the Europa League final, the FA Cup final, or, and it would be a bit humdrum for United, given the way things are going, if it was Fulham just on the final day of the Premier League season. With Sabitzer back in the squad, you have to feel that he is the favourite to come in and start in Bruno Fernandes' place as the number 10. Had Sabitzer not made it, it might have been Fred playing up there role that he has occupied a handful of times this season, not to any great success, but Fred is a better midfielder further forward and the same applies with Spitzer as well. The biggest plus for United coming into this game is Christian Eriksen. He's back in the team, he's back from the, back in the starting lineup, and he was terrific against Nottingham Forest on Sunday. It was pretty uh, fascinating watching him educate Zidane Iqbal and Mark Rado exchanging passes in the warm-up, he gets a tap on the shoulder, he's told to prepare a bit more rigorously 
this is all at 15 minutes notice. He's parachuted into the starting lineup, and for me, he's United's man of the match. His ability to control games is going to be absolutely key against Sevilla in a European knockout tie away from home because United, if there's one thing they've struggled to master under Ten Hag, it has been that controlling style that he became renowned for at Ajax. But there have been glimpses in recent matches that they are starting to master it, and the chance of them mastering it, of course, are even better when they've got Christian Eriksen in the side. There's a little bit of traffic building up now, not too much, but the press conference that Ericsson will be attending with Eric Ten Hag will take place shortly. There'll be a bit more on-team news, I'm sure, but maybe not too much given that Ten Hag has been very coy at the moment with potential players available as well as injured players.